Inside a dungeon, a team of crystal moss collectors are making their way through residual magic power trying to find crystal moss. It was getting closer to the end of their workday, and Kang Hyunmu, the protagonist of this manhwa, has yet to meet his quota. While making his way through the residual magic power, he noticed a piece of crystal moss that was big enough to fill his daily quota. He starts climbing up the wall to collect the crystal moss, however he slipped and fell into the residual magic water. Yumin, a college research assistant, quickly rushed to Hyunmu, asking him if he was fine. Hyunmu took a moment checking his suit to see if any of the contaminated water made contact with his skin. He told her that he was fine, but Min was still concerned and she asked him not to push himself too much. The other workers agreed with Min and reminded Hyunmu that the water had been contaminated by mana from the crystal moss, and for normal people like them one mistake could mean death, so he shouldn't be trying to push himself. After their workday, Hyunmu was reminded of how unfair life was because he couldn't fill his daily quota. His pay was only $30. We then learned that 30 years ago when dungeons started to appear, regular citizens started awakening the power to challenge these dungeons. However, Hyunmu hadn't been so lucky. He was a zero-star powerless person with no chance of awakening an ability. While thinking of how he was going to get through the day with $30, Robert Lee, a lawyer, entered the changing room to deliver what his father left behind for him. Hyunmu was confused. He never met his parents, he was a bottom feeder with no chance at life. The lawyer handed him a necklace saying he was told to give the necklace to him. Hyunmu stored the necklace away and quickly finished changing. Later at a bus stop he showed Min the necklace, and she told him that the necklace was a return stone, an item hunters used to escape dungeons. She had heard a rumor that a return stone could only be used inside a dungeon, so she wondered why his dead father left him a return stone when Hyunmu was a zero star. Those words cut Hyunmu deep and she quickly tried to apologize, but the damage was already done. Trying to shift the conversation she asked him if he heard about Lee Jai T. At that moment the bus arrives, Hyunmu told her that he didn't care about Lee and he boarded the bus. Later at his house Hyunmu watched a broadcast that covered Lee Jai T and his guild clearing a five-star dungeon, and in the entire world Lee and his guild are the third guild to clear a five-star dungeon. Hyunmu compared his life to Lee, Lee was rich, strong, popular, and no gay shit good looking. On the other hand all he had was a return stone his father left behind for him. He wasn't complaining about his situation in life, he just wished he had a chance like Lee so he could make use of it. He made a fist squeezing the return stone in his hand and activating it. Suddenly he was teleported to a strange place and flooded with different prompts that were making no sense to him. One of the prompts that read you are the final survivor stood out to him and he questioned what it could mean. He started calling out to see if anyone was out there but nothing. He continued calling out, and he noticed a giant vein of crystal moss. The one he failed to collect earlier would have been worth a few hundred dollars, but this vein should be worth a few thousand, maybe even tens of thousands. Suddenly he was hit with a poison status, and he was paralyzed. He couldn't breathe and his stamina was being drained continuously. The system informed him that he was being attacked by an enemy, but when he looked around there was nothing near him. In the end he died, to the most dangerous enemy, Fine Dust. He was revived, and was prompted with a quest first night in hell, and the objective was to survive till the morning. He quickly grabbed his jacket and ran off. He didn't know if someone was putting him through this, but if he finds them then he will be sure to have his revenge. After running around aimlessly for five minutes, Hyunmu died. On his eighth death, Hyunmu came up with his first plan which was to pray and ask God for forgiveness, but after 11 minutes he died. On his 11th death his poison and paralysis resistance increased, and he came up with his second plan, breathing in all of the fine dust that was killing him. As you probably guessed the plan didn't work and he died. On his 14th run his resistance increased again, and he realized that he survived the longest when he was just breathing, instead of panicking. He started using a breathing technique he learned when he was a kid, he died, but this time he survived longer and even leveled up. He continued with the breathing technique, and on his 28th death his body felt light, and due to the fact that the poison in his body had reached a critical point he learned the rare skill poison blood, and would no longer suffer damage from poison. However Hyunmu couldn't believe it, and turned his attention to the crystal moss instead. There was crystal moss everywhere, Hyunmu picked one up wishing they were real so he could sell it. Suddenly the system asked him if he wanted to store the crystal moss. He wasn't sure what was going to happen but he replied yes, and the crystal moss disappeared. He quickly checked his inventory and learned that the crystal moss was real. Even though he was in hell the fact that he was unlocking cool abilities made him happy, but all this while he was hearing a sound that's been bothering him. 
He turned around to look for the source and noticed a horde of mosquitoes making their way to his location. He tried running away but the horde quickly caught up to him and started drinking his blood. He died but because the mosquitoes drank his poisoned blood they also died. After reviving he leveled up, and because his poisoned blood killed over 100 mosquitoes at once he obtained a normal achievement, and the power of his poisoned blood increased. However he also contracted an abnormal disease from the mosquitoes and began slowly losing health. He stood up protesting against the system, but because of the disease he stumbled and crashed into a chair. He learned the dismantling skill but he didn't notice. His health dropped below 10% and he started regenerating with his last man standing title. He stood up looking at the notifications he received, finally realizing that he got the dismantling skill by breaking one of the chair leg. He picked up the chair and activated the dismantling skill, splitting the chair into different parts. He organized the different parts on the ground, and he tried to create something to see if he could get another skill. It worked and he got the normal skill creation. He didn't know how long he was going to be stuck in hell for, or what scary monsters he might come across. But he knew that if he wants to live he needs to make a shelter. He starts looking around for things he could use. He found more crystal moss and stored it. He continued looking and found a newspaper. He picked it up and tried reading the headline but he was struggling. Suddenly he obtained another skill, and with the language skill he could read the newspaper, and it was an article covering Lee. The newspaper further confirmed that this hell he was in was somehow connected to the real world. But even if the two worlds were connected there was nothing he could do about it. So first he wanted to see what he could do with the mosquito corpses. After dismantling all the mosquito corpses he was exhausted. He obtained hell mosquito stingers, hell mosquito wings, and hell mosquito blood. Next he used the creation skill and created a hell dart. It was a rare item and the fact that he kept getting rare things concerned him. He created more hell darts and used his creation skill on the rest of the materials he had. The legendary class item Unknown Egg was created, and his creation abilities increased greatly. There is a 50% chance that the egg would be alive or dead, and he could keep it alive by meeting certain requirements. He held the egg close to his chest trying to give it warmth, but stopped after getting embarrassed. Suddenly he heard the sounds of something breaking the door down. He hid, and a goblin made its way through the door. The goblin noticed Humu hiding in the corner and lunged at him. Humu dodged the attack and started heading up the stairs. The goblin chased after him. He pulled out the club he made with the creation skill from his inventory and attacked the goblin. The goblin dodged and launched a series of counterattacks, breaking Humu's makeshift club in the process. The goblin smiled and started speaking in its native tongue. Humu was taken aback. He didn't know what the monster was saying, but it was definitely speaking. The goblin saw that Humu was distracted and struck him with his sword down his chest. At that moment Humu took some hell darts out of his inventory and threw them at the goblin. One of the darts landed on the goblin's hand and it became poisoned. Without hesitation the goblin lifted his sword and cut his own arm off. Tunmu became distracted again, and he concluded that the reason the dark poisoned the goblin's arm was because of his poison blood skill. When he focused on the battle the goblin was gone, he realized that the goblin had jumped in the air and moved to his blind spot, but it was too late. The goblin managed to strike him down. The goblin started walking, away surprised that there were still humans left. And as the goblin walked off, Humu could be seen smiling, almost like he enjoyed getting struck down. His health fell below 10% and he started regenerating due to the perks of the last man standing title. The title saved him and he was able to complete the first night in Hell Quest. He was rewarded with one silver box, and as compensation for the difficulty of the mission the silver box became a golden box. He could also use the return stone now, and he had 14 days till he was assigned a new quest. Humu quickly reached into his shirt grabbing the return stone tightly, and when he opened his eyes he was in the real world. He started celebrating, and shouted I'm back, I made it back alive. Suddenly he ripped the return stone from his neck, damning his father for giving it to him. He was about to crush the return stone on the ground. However he recalled all the abilities and materials he was able to gain in hell and stopped realizing that the return stone is his only way to move up as a bottom feeder. Min who was walking by noticed him, but she wasn't sure if it was Humu and she called out to him. He turned around and after seeing that it was Humu she quickly rushed to him and gave him her raincoat. She took him to her house and gave him a mana contamination remover just in case Humu was contaminated. Humu told her that he was fine, but she shouted at him for taking mana contamination lightly since it could mean his death. Humu took the mana contamination remover 
and went into the shower. After using the Mana Contamination Remover, Hyunwoo stepped out of the shower and asked Min what day it was, and she told him that it was the 11th of September, and as he tried to make sense of what had happened to him, Min admired his body. She snapped out of it, telling herself to get a grip. Then she told Hyunwoo that she was going out to buy him new clothes. Hyunwoo wanted to use his old clothes, but she refused since they were contaminated and torn. After she left, Hyunwoo opened his inventory to check on his reward for completing the quest. He opened the golden chest, and the quality of the reward was increased due to the effect of his title SSS rank good luck, and he obtained the legendary skill card battle helper. Hyunwoo held the skill card in disbelief. It's usually very difficult to get a skill, and even a rare skill could get you special treatment. He was sure that in the entire world only seven people had a legendary skill, meaning he had become the eighth. However, there wasn't a single explanation of what the skill does, so he started throwing punches hoping the skill would activate, then returned from the store catching Hyunwoo punching the air, embarrassing him. She handed him the clothes she bought, and after he changed into them, she brought up the fact that he was fine after being exposed to mana and she asked him if he had any powers. Hyunwoo told her that he recently awakened his powers so he didn't have full control over them. He recalled that Min was researching something, and he asked her if it was Crystal Moss she was researching. She told him that it was, and he pulled out Crystal Moss from his inventory and showed it to Min. Min grabbed his hand in disbelief. Where on earth did you get this, she asked. Hyunwoo asked her if where he got it was important, and she told him that the Crystal Moss was very pure, and the energy level is close to five stars, and getting more would be valuable for her research. Hyunwoo told her that he didn't have any plans of giving her the Crystal Moss unless she helped him find a way to sell it. However, selling crystal moss of that size and purity would be difficult without documentation proving you are a hunter. Since the size of the crystal moss was a problem, Hyunwoo broke the moss in two. She started hitting and cursing him. Hyunwoo told her that he had more crystal moss and asked if she could sell the one he just broke. She told him that she could, and he gave her two conditions. One, she couldn't tell anyone where the crystal moss came from, and two, no one can know he was the one selling it. Min got angry at the fact that those were his only conditions when he just wasted a crystal moss of that purity. He apologized and grabbed his torn clothes getting ready to leave, but Min asked him to sleep over. The next morning, Min had a glow to her, but Hyunwoo looked drained. She told him that she was leaving to meet up with the buyer and left. One week later, Hyunwoo tagged along with Min to meet the buyer, although he was the one who asked her to sell the crystal moss. There are a lot of guys who are on the verge of losing everything, and those kinds of people are saying they will buy the rest of the crystal moss at a premium price. Something was definitely off. When they entered the cafe they agreed upon, Hyunwoo noticed a big ominous fella making him glad he tagged along. But to his surprise, Min grabbed his hand and brought him to an old man wearing a trench coat. The old man introduced himself as Park H. Wiseau, and from his grip strength alone, Hyunwoo could tell he was strong. And if he attacked them, the chances of him winning was low. Min pulled out a bag of crystal moss for Park to inspect. After inspecting them, he asked Min if he needed to deposit the money in the same account. She told him that the account has not changed, and Park grabbed the bag and wished them a goodbye, calling Hyunwoo by his full name. Hyunwoo was shocked, and he questioned if the old man figured out he was behind the crystal moss. Min started teasing him for thinking an old man was going to attack them. She got a notification on her phone and showed it to Hyunwoo, asking him how it feels to make $1 million. Inside a car park reports that his deal was successful and that they obtained all of the crystal moss on the market. His boss asked him what he thought about the person behind the crystal moss, and Park shared that. He thinks the person will be strong since he is selling crystal moss with purity that can only be found in five-star dungeons. He also reported that there was someone with men, but he needed to observe him a little bit longer. The idea that someone selling crystal moss of this purity got the boss wondering how strong they were. Park told him that they would at least be on the boss's level, intriguing the boss even more, and he asked Park to investigate men and her partner. Park accepted the mission revealing that his boss is Lee. A few days later in hell, Hyunwoo was doing some pull-ups. After doing 150, he dropped down from the bar. His strength level cap increased, but Hyunwoo was disappointed in himself. Just that light workout burnt him out. He would have been able to do more if he wasn't in hell. And while laying there exhausted from the pull-ups, he questioned how long he had spent in hell. A prompt popped up informing him that he had 18 hours and 15 minutes until he was assigned his next quest. Hyunwoo was getting used to hell after coming back and forth a few times. When he was in hell time also passed in the real world. 
and the time left for the next quest moved the same as the real world. The only problem is that his location changed every time he returned from hell. He got the hang of everything else but he just couldn't understand why his location had to change every time he returned from hell. He opened his status window and checked the skill he received earlier battle helper. He learned that the skill optimized his accuracy by controlling his movements and also helping him make judgments by predicting the enemy's movements. If the skill were to be in a game it would be an illegal cheat, something a hacker would use. Hitting a cheat skill like Battle Helper made Hyunwoo realize that he wouldn't be able to survive in hell without some cheat skills or plot armor. He approached a punching bag, and before he could even throw a punch the skill Battle Helper activated. As he was throwing punches something was weird, it felt like he was automatically focusing his punches on one area. And finally after a few more punches the punching bag was destroyed. With this Hyunwoo finally understood the functions of the skill battle helper, he was then assigned the new quest, a beginner's friend, and his objective is to kill five beginner scarecrows. However Hyunwoo got angry, he was already level 7, and the system decided to give him a beginner's quest now, and on top of that he didn't recall seeing any scarecrows during his time in hell, but he needed to increase his level fast, so he wore his clothes and moved out to find some scarecrows. He followed the crystal moss and found stairs leading down to a basement of a building that had been torn apart. He made his way down the stairs and found some creepy-looking robots. The appearance of the robots scared Hyunwoo, and he wondered why the creator of the robots couldn't have made them look nice. The system brought up the robots' information, and Hyunwoo learned that the robots were the scarecrows he was looking for, but he was shocked to see that there were question marks next to the scarecrows' levels. A shiver ran down Hyunwoo's spine after the thought of all the scarecrows suddenly coming to life came to mind. He picked up debris and hid behind it. Then, he took out a hell dart from his inventory and threw it at one of the scarecrows. The scarecrow didn't move after getting hit with the hell dart, so Hyunwoo ran in thinking it would be an easy win. He threw a punch, and to his surprise even though he threw the punch with all of his might it didn't feel like he hit anything. The scarecrow suddenly turned on recognizing Hyunwoo as an opponent, and activated sparring level 1. Hyunwoo quickly realized that the scarecrows would adjust to match his level, and he protested to the system for not letting him know about the scarecrows beforehand. The scarecrows didn't care about his protest and attacked. Luckily, they were slower than the goblin that tried to kill him previously so he was able to dodge. If you are level 7 in the real world, you would be treated like a bodyguard or a soldier with 5 years of experience. But in hell he was being treated like a beginner. This angered him and he activated the skill battle helper to deal with the scarecrows. However, he was quickly surrounded by the scarecrows. One of the scarecrows goes in for an attack. Hyunwoo dodge encountered. But this created an opening for one of the scarecrows to put Hyunwoo in a headlock. After struggling for a while he managed to free himself and land a solid punch on the scarecrow's face. This triggered them to activate sparring level 2. Four scarecrows immobilized Hyunwoo, and the other one proceeded to use him as a punching bag. As he was being used as a punching bag his body's solidarity increased, hemorrhage resistance increased, and his pain resistance also increased. The scarecrows left him with less than 10% of his health left, and he started regenerating thanks to the title Last Man Standing. Hyunwoo started to question if he should run away from the scarecrows, but he hadn't landed a single good hit on the scarecrows, and his pride wouldn't allow him to run. Since the scarecrows were using martial arts, he took out a heinous club that had been strengthened out of his inventory to turn the tides of the battle. He rushed in and managed to break the hand of one of the scarecrows. Suddenly the scarecrows also equipped their weapons and the tide of the battle was no longer in Hyunwoo's favor. Hyunwoo died and returned back to the Scarecrows and continued his fight. This time he didn't use the club and relied on his fists. He was able to tie up four Scarecrows and with the help of the skill battle helper he could handle the Scarecrows in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He pinned the Scarecrow to the ground and attacked its chest continuously until its core was revealed. He was about to destroy the core but stopped after the Scarecrow activated sparring level 3. He wanted the Scarecrows to get stronger since the stronger they got the stronger he would become. Later he opened his eyes trying to recall how many times he died after the Scarecrow activated sparring level 3. He couldn't believe it every time he died the Scarecrow was using a different martial art and he questioned how many martial arts the Scarecrows knew. The Scarecrow approached him this time taking a fist fight stance. Hyunwoo was excited by this because he didn't think he would die in a fist fight. He attacked the scarecrow first and was pushing it back. 
The Scarecrow activated sparring level 4 and attacked Hyunmu's eyes. Hyunmu flew back complaining about his eyes, but the Scarecrow wasn't done and it proceeded to bite him. He died and at the end of his ninth death Hyunmu realized three facts. One, the Scarecrows couldn't increase the difficulty past sparring level 4, which is why he wasn't noticing any new patterns in the Scarecrow's attacks. Second, the Scarecrows had a fixed pattern of moving, and if there were any differences then it would stop to correct its movements. Third, there's no need for him to destroy the Scarecrows. If they take a certain amount of damage, they would stop moving. So there is no need for him to totally destroy the Scarecrows. After realizing these three things, Hyunmu was able to defeat all the Scarecrows and clear the quest friend of a beginner. This made him feel good, and he fell to the ground due to exhaustion. All he wanted to do was fight monsters on the same level as him, but that's not the type of place hell is. He questioned why the quest was named friend of a beginner when the difficulty was not something a regular beginner could handle. As compared Compared to learning something, it was more like Hell was beating the fighting techniques into him. He stood up and decided to check his rewards for the quest before he returned to the real world. He opened the silver chest and the quality of his reward was increased due to the effects of the title SSS rank good luck, and he obtained what looked like a golden wrapping cloth. The wrapping cloth was the legendary item Celestial Cradle, and it accelerates growth and fully restores any damage in the body. Hyunwoo understood the part about the cradle restoring damage in the body, but he couldn't understand what the growth acceleration was about. He was happy that he got another legendary item but he didn't know how to use it. He questioned if he wrapped the cradle around his head if it would make him smarter. He wrapped the cradle around his head but quickly took it off because of embarrassment, and he was glad that no one was around to see what he just did. He continued to observe the cradle, and he realized that when he died and was revived he would be in perfect condition, meaning the cloth wouldn't be useful to him. He decided to sell the cradle when he returned to the real world, and opened his inventory to store it away. The egg he obtained when he was dismantling mosquitoes caught his attention, and because the cradle mentioned growth he figured it might work on eggs. He took the egg out of his inventory and wrapped the cradle around it. After a while nothing had happened and he questioned if the cradle didn't work on eggs. He decided to stop waiting and just sell the cradle when he returned back to the real world, but suddenly the egg started hatching. Hyunmu became concerned. He hadn't thought about what he would do if a monster that wanted to kill him came out of the egg. But it was too late the egg had already hatched and a fairy looking monster came out. The monster was smaller than what he imagined and he reached out his finger to pet it and suddenly the fairy grabbed his finger and bit him. In shock he threw the fairy into the ceiling and complained to the system for giving him a monster that wanted to eat him as a reward. The fairy stood up and told Humu that she was hungry. Humu took out a piece of candy from his pocket and asked the fairy if she wanted to eat the candy instead. The fairy refused and pointed at Humu. Humu allowed the fairy to drink his blood and a while later he got irritated that the fairy was still drinking his blood and he asked her to stop. She stopped and helped him stop the bleeding. Afterwards, she complained about the taste of Hyunmu's blood only being somewhat satisfying and asked him to bring out her dessert. This irritated Hyunmu and he grabbed her asking her to say those words again. Realizing that her life is in danger, she thanked Hyunmu for letting her drink his blood. Hyunmu decided to let go of her and introduced himself. He asked her for her name, and after thinking long and hard about it, she couldn't remember. The only thing she remembered is that she was supposed to appear at the end. This confused Hyunmu and he asked her if she was some kind of superhero that appeared in the end to save the world. She replied with a smile, No, I promise to eat all living organisms when the world ends. This didn't make sense to Hyunmu. This small fairy creature was saying it is going to devour all living organisms when the world ends. Hyunmu suddenly remembered that his blood was poisonous. The poison was so potent that it melted a goblin's arm, but she was fine after drinking his poisonous blood. He couldn't use the skill battle helper to defeat her because she wasn't hostile to him. He didn't know what her skill level is, and it looked like he wouldn't be able to just leave her behind. His only other option was to take her as a pet. Since he decided to take her in as a pet, he gave her the name Renian, which she accepted because it sounded similar to Agent of the Apocalypse in Pixie Tongue. Humu then asked Renian to promise to never eat a human. Renian asked if that included him, and Humu replied that he didn't care about others but she should never try to eat him, and if Renian was a hungry to the point where she could die. He gave her permission to eat another human as long as it's not him, and in exchange for her promising he would give her some blood. Renian accepted and after drinking Hyunmu's blood again she asked him why the scarecrows were destroyed. 
Hinlu explained that they were destroyed for his victory, but he noticed something strange. One of the scarecrows had been ripped in two. He recalled the battle with the scarecrows and came to the conclusion that he wasn't the one that ripped the scarecrow in two. Suddenly a prompt appears informing him that the additional trait Valiant Energy had been added to Battle Helper. He picked up a scarecrow to test out the additional trait, and to his surprise he destroyed the scarecrow with a single punch. Seeing what Hinlu had just done, Renian wanted to try too, and she replicated the move on another scarecrow. The other scarecrows were activated, and they surrounded Hinlu, but instead of recognizing him as an opponent, they recognized him as a superhuman, and they directed him to the corner of the room that was packed with debris. Hinlu started clearing out the debris, and as he cleared, Renian could smell something delicious. Hinlu continued clearing the debris and came across a skeleton. Renian took a bone from the skeleton and started eating it. Hinlu took the bone from her before she could finish it and placed it back where it was. There was also a letter that read it's been three years since the level rose to nightmare. The situation only worsened. Children who were born in the potent dust died. Hunters started dying out. Hope faded away and humanity went extinct. Hyunlu was stunned. According to the letter and the message he saw when he entered, hell is the future of the real world. And for high-ranking ability users to die out as well showed the dangerous monsters that were about to appear. Hyunlu couldn't figure out who left the letter behind. And Renian who was looking through the belongings of the skeleton found a return stone and showed it to Hyunlu. The return stone looked different from the one that brought him to hell. So he asked Renian to give it to him so he could observe it. Renian handed him the return stone and suddenly it started glowing brightly. Once the light had disappeared, the return stone was gone, and Hyunwoo had a strange tattoo on his hand. A message appeared telling him that the stars were watching him, and a veil of darkness started surrounding Hyunwoo. He tried to get away, but it was too late. He was in a strange place with nothing around. He started calling out for Renian, and suddenly a message appeared informing him that advancing Star Baru had recognized his absorption of the Star Fragment. However, the Star Baru became disappointed after seeing Hyunlu and forfeited the fragment, and left. This irritated Hyunlu and he gave the star the middle finger. In anger, Hyunlu started hitting the message that had popped up, and accidentally lifted a lock. The system then explained that the owners of stars are beings who have absolute control over their own territory somewhere in space. These beings place their absolute power into fragments and lend them out. They do so in hopes that their kin will use this power to become rulers and expand their territory. Hyunlu was in possession of one of these fragments. Because of this, the stars wished for him to become their kin. Hyunlu realized that the return stone Renian found earlier was the fragment the system was talking about. And after the explanation, all of the stars that wanted Hyunlu to be their kin appeared. A prompt appeared asking Hyunlu to choose the star he wanted to follow. However, he refused, even if the system wanted him to choose he wouldn't since he knew nothing about the stars. So one by one the system introduced the stars to Hyunmu, the shattering star gall, an absolute ruler who laughs behind a plotty mastermind. He rules over the masses with daggers, poison and conspiracies, while staying behind the scenes. The waking star bird is the father of all grief and melancholy. He commands an army of the dead and enjoys watching despair after destruction. Starving Star Yagulim is a snake of greed and desire. The citizens of his territory are in a constant state of starvation, and his wish is to swallow the world. Whispering Star Monstrel instigates in the light and deceives in the dark, and she can deceive any powerful being to kneel at her feet. Conquering Star Aron is a loser who advances with fire and slaughters his enemies with steel. He wants to burn the world with meaningless hate and resentment, and he would be satisfied to rule over ashes. Hyunwoo became concerned. All of the stars sounded like they needed therapy. The system informed him that the stars become interested in those similar to them. Hyunwoo couldn't believe it. The system was basically saying he had the nature of a conspiracist with a personality disorder and is a greedy, attention seeker who also has intermittent explosive disorder. Hyunwoo burst into a fit of rage proving that the stars' assessment of his personality was correct. But even if he was all those things, somehow he thought he was better than the stars. He asked the stars what would change if he chose them, and one by one the stars showed him glimpses of what they had to offer. And again a message appears asking him to choose a star. Hyunmu still couldn't choose, thinking about the fact that he was in hell. There is no way the stars would give something away for free, and he asked them if there was a price he needed to pay. The system explained that the stars raise their kin, and their kin will serve as a proxy for them. Hyunmu then asked if he had to choose right now. The system explained that choosing a star is a rare opportunity, as he would receive their acknowledgement and continue to succeed in hell, his growth would become much faster if he chose a star. However, Hyunwoo didn't care since there was nothing the stars could give him right now. A prompt appears informing him that the stars are feeling displeased with his arrogance. From the prompt, Hyunwoo concluded that the stars were telling him to watch his mouth, 
but this irritated him. He was happy that the stars were willing to grant him power just so he would follow them, but they were the ones that came to him. He didn't seek them out. This is his first time hearing about stars so he couldn't just trust them out of nowhere. Even a used car dealer wouldn't be trying so hard to sell him in a deal. The conquering star Aaron lost interest in Hyun Lu and left. The other stars decided that it would be best to give Hyun Lu more time to think about their offer and the black veil was lifted. The whispering star Monstro stayed behind and awakened a portion of Hyun Lu's abilities. He awakened the legendary skill domination. She was giving him a pretty big bribe to choose her, but something was strange. If the stars are beings who could give out legendary skills that easily, why couldn't they stop the real world from becoming hell? There definitely would have been someone other than him who caught their eye. If the difficulty was on a scale where high-ranking hunters couldn't stop the real world from becoming hell, then it's possible that the stars were the ones who created hell. It looked like he would have to do more research about the stars. After returning from hell, Hyunmu was lost in a forest for three days. He thought that it would be enough if he just focused on getting stronger in hell. But he now realized that there are still a lot of things he needs to pay attention to once he gets back to the real world. For example, never knowing where he would end up after returning from hell. And whenever he returned, he looked like a beggar, so he sneaked around hoping no one would find him but most times he was unlucky. After making it to Min's house, he told her that he wanted to buy a house. Min, who was drinking her morning coffee, was shocked. Hyunmu looked like a beggar, and him needing a house came out of nowhere. Hyunmu continued on saying he wanted a house that had sturdy walls and is clean like a hospital's disinfectant room. Min told him that buying a house isn't the problem. This confused Hyunmu, so she explained that even though he had a lot of money, it all came from illegal ways. To the government, Hyunmu was a powerless zero-star commoner that is mooching off of Min. Her words left Hyunmu depressed, and she tried explaining that she was just saying others might misunderstand. After taking a quick shower, Hyunmu went into the kitchen and cooked noodles. According to what Min told him, it would be hard to buy a house, and on top of that, he needed a house that would fulfill all of his requirements. If he suddenly got the money to be able to buy a house, the people around him would get suspicious. If he wanted to be able to spend a lot of money at once, then it would be better if he got registered as a hunter and climbed up the ranks. He recalled the star that had left behind and gave him the legendary skill. He wondered why the system asked him to choose only one star. All of the stars possessed incredible strength, so why can't he have them all? He definitely wanted to get everything the stars had to offer. He didn't care if the world gets destroyed or if humanity goes extinct. He would just get stronger to make sure he survived, and then he can rule the world under his feet. Hyunmu made up his mind to rob the stars for everything that they had, and Min who was watching asked him to stop acting like he was in a TikTok edit and eat the noodles he made. Hyunmu turned on the news and started eating. The news was covering Lee's announcement of his plans to seal the Beaktu dungeon. Many had tried to seal the Beaktu dungeon, but failed, so Min questioned if Lee and his team would be able to do it, and it would be the first attempt to clear the dungeon again after North Korea was ruined by a flood phenomenon. Hyunmu asked Min what the flood phenomenon was, and she explained that it's a phenomenon where monsters come flooding out of gates. The Beaktu dungeon was a five-star dungeon, so the monsters that are coming out are also five stars. If your weapon isn't infused with mana, it would be impossible to take on a five-star monster. It was a gamble trying to raid a dungeon like Beaktu. Lee was probably trying to seal the Beaktu dungeon because he was the first person in Korea to successfully raid it. Before he raided it, all the guilds said that it would be impossible to launch an attack in the north. Hyunmu continued eating and the reporter informed the viewers that the hunter's registration test would begin in three days. This test would be the best test in the year because Tsung Guild, Lee's Guild, would be recruiting a lot of people for his plan to seal the Beaktu dungeon next year. Hyunmu decided to check out the hunter's registration test. However, because he was getting constantly distracted, Min got irritated and asked him to focus on eating his noodles. The next day, the hunter's association was completely crowded with hunters trying to get recruited by Lee's Guild. While in line, Hyunmu is shouted at to move forward. He angrily turns around facing the hunter that shouted at him. The ambitious hunter realized that Hyunmu isn't someone he could handle and kindly asked him to move forward. It looked like it was Hyunmu's first time at the association, so the hunter asked him if he was going to get evaluated. He told him that he was, recalling that the only time he got evaluated was when he was a kid at the orphanage. And after recalling, he questioned why he was the only kid that was getting evaluated at the orphanage. The hunter says he could tell Hyunmu was a newbie by the way he was acting in the line and explained that because the association didn't filter hunters and those registering for the first time everything is a mess, the waiting area is in complete chaos and it's overcrowded. Hyunmu asked him if there were professional hunters mixed in with the newbies as well. And the hunter replied, of course, 
Since Lee's Guild announced that they would be doing open recruitment, every hunter is here to try and get recruited. Humu asked the hunter if he was here to get recruited as well, and he told him that it would be too hard for him, and he just wanted to update his registered level. His level is something others can't see, so having the Hunter's Association evaluate and acknowledge his ability will make it easy to join teams for dungeon missions. The line continued moving, but Humu became distracted, and the hunter had to push him as the line continued to move. Getting registered is the association determining your value. You. It made sense since not even guns can do what hunters can, so of course people would be obsessed with getting reevaluated so they could score more points and could gain control over their lives. But for Humu, if he draws too much attention, he would get noticed right away, so he needed to get registered quickly and rise up in rank before he gets caught for selling crystal moss illegally. After a while, Humu finally made it to the front of the line and had to go through three checks. First was the identity check, which was just for formalities, so most people got passed without an issue. The second check is the status check, where they draw your blood and put it on the test papers. And the next check after the status check is the abilities check. To put it simply, it was combat ability evaluation. The average score would be close to 100, but just having a higher stat doesn't necessarily mean that a hunter is strong, so they don't really care about the numbers. Himu reached his hand into the machine, causing the numbers to go crazy. The ones conducting the evaluation were confused, questioning if Humu's strength had broken the machine. But the machine was fine, even when Lee took his test, so how strong would Humu's abilities have to be for that to happen? Humu asked them if he broke the machine, and they told him that he had nothing to worry about since it was a malfunction. And while they recalibrated the machine, Humu wondered if he would have to control his strength. After the machine was recalibrated, Humu decided to do the test with moderate strength. But again the machine broke. The doctors were puzzled and questioned if they should report it. However, they decided to recalibrate the machine again. A while later, after the evaluation was done, Hyunmu received his score which was pending review. The workers of the association entered the waiting area explaining that they would be split into three groups. Those with an attack skill would go furthest to the right, those with a defensive skill would go in the middle, and finally those with a buff or abnormal skill would go furthest to the left. At the receptionist area, the receptionist complained about the evaluation team not doing their job properly and asked Humu if his skill was abnormal. Humu told her that it seemed that way, and she told him that he passed his evaluation. She asked him if he was going to take the hunter ability test. Humu replied yes, and she handed him a leaflet containing information about the test. She says that the test would be different from other times because they were collaborating with Lee. And even though it made her sound like a boomer, she told him that even though being a hunter might look cool, there is a chance that you could get hurt or even die. Hunters who earn a lot of money are in a minority. And because money is slow for those who aren't in the minority, they need to get other jobs. Hyunlu told her that he wasn't getting registered as a hunter for the money. The receptionist asked him if he was doing it for fame or power and he replied saying he was doing it because of a sense of duty to protect people. No one knows how dangerous the monsters in the dungeons would become in the future so he needed to get stronger so he could handle it. The receptionist, thinking that Humu was speaking crazy, handed him his certificate of registration, leaflet, and emergency contact list. Then she told him that the theme of the test would be dungeon, and if he reads through the leaflet, it would provide additional information. A while later a car pulled up at the association, and Lee came out instantly drawing a crowd. He asked one of his guild members if the preparations were going smoothly, and the guild member reported that there were no issues. Continuing on, he reported that the Red Butterfly group had already arrived, and it seemed many other guilds were trying to recruit them, but the Butterfly group already had their minds set on joining Lee's guild. Lee told his guild member that the Butterfly group wasn't really trying to join his guild. Their goal was the Northern Expedition. The members of the Butterfly group were talented individuals, and they've ignored every guild's attempt to recruit them. But as soon as they heard news about the Northern Expedition, they all applied for the test. If it was Red Butterfly, the leader, she could have just applied to Lee's guild and she would have been accepted. Lee asked his members about the other newcomers taking the test. He reported that the other candidates couldn't compare to the Butterfly group but there was one person with an abnormal ability. He handed Lee the documents containing the information on the candidates and explained that Hyun Lu is a hunter that has the poison blood skill. And from the documents, it could be seen that the toxicity level was way higher than usual. Lee was impressed, but the poison blood skill had a lot of drawbacks. For example, if one mistake is made, then his teammates would suffer. So he would just keep Hyun Lu in mind for now. Inside the candidate waiting room, a man dressed in a suit approached Hyun Lu and handed him a tile. Confused by what the tile was for, Hyun Lu called out to him, but the strange man just walked 
walked away quickly. He couldn't follow the man because the test was about to begin. Over a speaker, it was announced that the candidates could enter the testing grounds. The candidates entered the Yongsen Hunter Association 3rd Gymnasium Dungeon, which was modeled after the appearance of a two-star dungeon in Ukraine. It was then explained that the goal of the test is to gather as many of the tiles that they received when entering. The theme of the test was dungeon, and for the next three hours they had to survive. Instantly after the test began, one of the candidates in Hyunmu's group took charge, explaining that each person will have one tile, while monsters would have one to three tiles. The person to collect the most tiles would receive the reward, which means monsters weren't the only prey. They could also hunt other candidates. The candidate asked the others if they would like to move together like a group. However, Humu refused, saying he didn't want to. The candidate explained that it would be advantageous to join them because they had someone with a shield skill and someone who could heal. However, Humu didn't think it would matter. The rewards were going to be given to one person, and if they moved together, they would have to split the rewards, and he didn't want to do that. The candidate asked him if he was refusing to join because of a selfish reason like that, and Humu replied, saying he didn't need another reason. As he walked away, one of the other candidates grabbed him, saying instead of letting him go to get his tile stolen, he should just hand it over. This reminded Humu of something he forgot to do. He smacked the big candidate knocking him out and asked the others to hand in their tiles. The candidate that was explaining earlier surrendered. Humu asked him if he thought he would let them leave without taking their tiles just because they surrendered. The candidate threw him all of the tiles that they had. Humu asked him what he would do after losing their tiles. The candidate explained that there were no instructions on what happened to those who lost their tiles. That means they shouldn't be disqualified. And the person that Humu knocked out with one punch had the shield skill, so the rest of them couldn't possibly win against him. Humu told him that he didn't care as long as he got all of their tiles. Inside the observation room, Lee was impressed with how Red Butterfly was performing. On top of stealing all of her teammates' tiles, she was showing that she was on the same level as a two-star hunter, and if the Red Butterfly group was together, they could definitely clear a three-star dungeon. And if they got the support they needed, they will be able to grow even more. But that being said, there was no need to pay too much attention on the results right now, because as time went on in the test, only those with talent will remain. And even though surviving the test was important, Lee was also looking for talented people who are able to take on the monsters that were prepared for the test. That's when things got interesting. Seeing the monster that the Red Butterfly was facing, the guild member asked Lee what the monster was, and Lee explained that it was the DNW Industries' newest development, an independent android that's still in the early stages of development. It was an android that had practiced using attack gloves and has an epidermis made from the spores of a mushroom monster found in the Chernobyl dungeon. The official name was Mushroom Droid. Even though the name wasn't impressive, it was made from integrating only the best technologies. Its combat ability is exceptional, and its endurance and mana reflection abilities are outstanding. Because the spores of the epidermis have regeneration qualities, there are lesser repair costs. The man asked Lee if the droid wouldn't be too hard for most hunters to face, and Lee says that that wouldn't be the case. You see, most of the droid's attacks are weak, and if a team works well together they should be able to defeat the droid just fine. The problem comes when someone is facing the droid alone, like Red Butterfly who likes going solo. It would take time for her to get used to the droid's attack patterns, and it would be difficult for a solo player to retrieve the tiles, since the tiles are deeply embedded within the droid. However, all the preparation that was made to keep Red Butterfly in check, she was just crushing them. Then Lee noticed that an unforeseen situation had occurred. Back to the test, Hyunmu was angry. He was really looking forward to facing real monsters. But the droids didn't move well, didn't speak, and their attack patterns were too simple, and even their stats were low. This left him bored out of his mind. After defeating all of the droids that attacked him, he picked one of them up and used the dismantling skill to retrieve the tile. However, the fact that the tile came out so easily concerned him, and he questioned if it was supposed to come out that smoothly. It was then announced that 34 minutes had passed, and more than 30% of the tiles had changed hands, and a ranking will be revealed. In third place was Hongryon with 7 tiles, second place was Red Butterfly with 9 tiles, and first place was Hyunmu with 16 tiles. Hyunmu knew that this would happen, although it would have been better if he faced goblins instead. The droids that he called scarecrows were just too easy. He decided to check the other items he got from dismantling the droid. He received the common item Spore Eroder's Flesh. He didn't think that items would drop from the monsters, but complained about the items not being better. If the scarecrows from hell were made from the Spore Eroder's Flesh, maybe that's why they are so durable. He put the flesh around his arm and realized that he could create something with it. 
he used his creation skill and crafted the Spore Eroder's knee guard and the Spore Eroder's arm guard. With his preparations done, it was time to take care of the rest of the test. A while later, Red Butterfly was looking at the leaderboard in disbelief. No matter how hard she tried, she couldn't surpass Hyunmu. She was then attacked by the other candidates, but she quickly dealt with them. War arrived surrounding her. As she was getting ready to face them, Hongryun came rushing through the candidates. After making it to the center, she asked Red Butterfly to stop going ahead of them since she could get hurt. Red Butterfly told her that she was rushing because she didn't have enough points to get first place. Hongryun told her that points aren't what's important. The original plan was to meet up with the Northern Expedition, and they already had enough tiles. The candidate that was in Hyunmu's group named Red Snake explained that if they combined their tiles, they would have 88 tiles. Red Butterfly told them that she didn't want to combine their tiles and asked them to stay close. Afterward, she left. Inside the observation room, Lee asked who Hyunmu was, and the man explained that it was Hyunmu's first time being a Evaluated. It seemed like his evaluation had been put on hold, and Lee asked if he was the one with the poison blood skill. The man answered saying he is, and Lee asked if it didn't seem like Hyunmu had experience in dungeons even though he was just registered today. Every action he made showed that he was used to being in a dungeon but that would mean he is one of those people that entered a dungeon without permission. Lee's guild member asked him if he was suggesting that Hyunmu was a rogue, but that wouldn't make sense because Hyunmu didn't have a criminal record. Lee explained that Hyunmu might be from an outside country since the regulations in other nations aren't too harsh. Of course he was only saying that it could be a possibility. Lee thought it would be great if Hyunmu and Red Butterfly hurried and fought each other. He was excited to see how it would go down. Back to the test Hyunmu decided to try the Spore Eroder's flesh, but spat it out because it was so disgusting. The taste was so bad that he wouldn't even try to eat it even if he was starving to death. He sensed that something was approaching him at high speeds. When he turned around, he noticed that Red Butterfly was about to attack him. He dodged the attack, and Red Butterfly asked him if he was working alone. Hyunmu teased her saying he had 150 lackeys waiting for his order. She concluded that he was working alone and told him that she was looking forward to fighting him. She rushed in for an attack. Hyunmu blocked and from the force of the attack he concluded that he would die if she landed a hit on him. And if he didn't have the skill battle helper to help him dodge the close ones, he would be in trouble. Since the skill battle helper could adapt mid-battle he didn't have much trouble dodging. But he still couldn't find an opening in her attack pattern. If things continued like this he would lose to her. Although he had a skill he was saving because it could be dangerous to humans, but it should be fine if he tried it with on Red Butterfly. Above of all else the skill was his last option. He applied valiant energy to battle helper and the two rushed at each other. As their fist made contact with each other the valiant energy that Hyunmu applied to battle helper caused the bones in Red Butterfly's arm to break. She admitted defeat and took out her bag of tiles for Hyunmu. As Hyunmu was approaching the tiles to pick it up, Hongryun appeared out of nowhere and hit him like a NFL linebacker. Hyunmu was sent flying into a wall, and after recovering he noticed Red Snake, the guy that he took the tile from in the beginning of the test. Red Snake never thought he would meet Hyunmu again and gave him his name. He explained that Hongryun and Red Butterfly were in the same group as him. Hongryun angrily turned towards Hyunmu and asked if he did this to Red Butterfly. At this point Hyunmu was starting to get angry and he said yes I did that. So what? He was about to continue on his rant but it was quickly announced that the three hours had passed and the ranking would be announced shortly. In third place Yoon Teek with 21 tiles. In second place Hyunmu with 69 tiles. Nice. Finally in first place Red Butterfly with 88 tiles. Hyunmu questioned why he didn't get first place and Hongryun explained that they gave Red Butterfly their tiles, and because Hyunmu couldn't collect Red Butterfly's tiles in time she got first place. Red Butterfly tried to explain to Hyunmu that it was a misunderstanding, and he should have been the one in first place. However, Hyunmu decided to forget about it since he couldn't go back in time. As he walked away, Hongryun called out to him asking him to apologize for breaking Red Butterfly's arm. Hyunmu wanted to turn around and teach Hongryun a lesson, but he couldn't afford getting too much attention, so he thought about his options. It made sense that Hongryun is upset about him breaking Red Butterfly's arm. He understood where she was coming from. But why is she making it seem like he was trying to rob her? He fought fair and square and won. They stole first place from him, and now she is making it seem like he was the bad guy. The more he thought about it, the more he realized that he needed to teach Hongryun a lesson. He activated the skill domination. Hongryun, who was mouthing off, suddenly froze. To her, it looked like Hyunmu was surrounded by five-star monsters and above. Everything around her, even her allies, looked like monsters. Hyunmu regretted what he did. He wanted to teach her a lesson but it was looking worse than what he had in his head. He didn't know what to do so he ran away. Inside the observation room, Lee and his guild member were stunned. 
The guild member asked Lee if Humu won because Red Butterfly had let her guard down. Lee knew that Humu's last move was too precise to be a fluke, but it still didn't make sense. It would make sense if they were the same level, but for a hunter who isn't even level 10 yet to beat someone twice his level is unheard of. The guild member asked Lee if he would like to meet up with Red Butterfly first, but Lee told him that he would meet with Hyunmu first. Inside the waiting room Hyunmu was cooling off, he was fine when using the skill battle helper with valiant energy, but domination used up too much of his mana. He wondered if he would have this raging headache until he returned to hell, and wished he didn't use domination on Hongroon. The guild member that was with Lee in the observation room approached Hyunmu congratulating him for successfully passing the test. He introduced himself as Team Ensu, the secretary team leader of Tsun Guild. He handed him the guild card and explained that because he possessed great skill the Tsun Guild would like to recruit him and provide him with all the necessities to improve his level. The Tsun Guild would make sure he reached his highest potential as a hunter beyond what any other guild could provide. Humu grabbed the guild card and asked Minsu if the Tsun Guild could help him reach the stars. Inside Lee's car, Lee watched the video of Humu and Red Butterfly's fight. He couldn't get enough of it, and it was like he was watching a movie. Minsu knocked on the car door window, and after Lee rolled down the window he lowered his head and apologized. Lee could tell that Humu rejected the Tsun Guild's offer, Minsu says. Humu wasn't interested even after he raised the conditions. Lee expected this. He had a feeling this would happen because strong hunters like Humu have a sense of pride, and he asked Minsu the reason Humu gave for rejecting the offer. Minsu says that Humu talked about reaching the stars. This shocked Lee, and he asked Minsu if what he said was correct. Minsu explained that he thought it was strange to, or maybe a new term young hunters were using, but he isn't sure what Humu meant and asked Lee if he knew what Humu meant. Lee says it was his first time hearing the term stars as well, and asked Minsu if Red Butterfly accepted their offer. Minsu reported that Red Butterfly accepted just as they planned. Lee praised Minsu on his good work and told the driver to take him home. As he drove off, he thought about what Minsu had reported. Since he couldn't tell Humu's intentions when he brought up the stars, he couldn't determine what he wanted. But one thing is for certain he had to keep an eye on him. Inside Min's car, Humu was looking over some cards. Min asked him what they were and he explained that it was the guild cards of all the guilds that tried to recruit him after the test was done. She then asked him what was in the box that was on his lap. Humu opened the box recalling what had happened after he left the waiting area. Red Butterfly approached him and apologized for what Hongryeon did during the test. He didn't know what she was talking about at first but then remembered that Hongryeon was the muscle mommy from before. He was just trying to scare her so she would shut up, but he ended up sending her to a hospital. Red Butterfly gave him the prize for coming in first place because it should have been his in the first place. She begged him to take it. Hyun explained to Min that he really didn't have a choice but to accept it. The first place prize was the rare equipment, tenacious grip gloves, and it's something Hyunmu thought would be useful. Then then told Hyunmu that the crystal moss he brought back from hell this time was all sold to Park again. It looked like Park had been going around looking for crystal moss, and even if Min sells it to another buyer, Park will find a way to get it for himself. Hyunmu questioned why the old man was buying all that crystal moss, even if crystal moss was a ruby that has a high innate value, does anyone need that much of it? If there was someone giving him orders behind the scene then that would explain how he got the funds and why he was buying so much crystal moss. And if that is the case then he wanted to contact the boss directly instead of meeting with the middleman. Bro activated some Sherlock Holmes level deduction skills. However it didn't seem like directly contacting the boss would be easy. Min asked him if he got anything else from the first place prize. And Hyunmu recalled that there was a prize money too. He turned the box upside down looking for the money and a check fell out. He then asked Min if she wanted to go to a restaurant before they headed home, showing her the check for 50 million. Later after having dinner the two arrived home. Hyunmu was impressed with the prize the association gave out. Min explained that the association had respect for hunters, and because of all the fame and money, ordinary people think living the hunting life is easy. Min asked him if he shouldn't be careful with how he was spending his money, however Hyunmu didn't think there was a point in worrying. He was now registered as a hunter and was only spending his money. Suddenly he sensed murderous intent. He told Min to get back into the car and lock it. As he walked away following the murderous intent he told Min not to get out until he returned. After arriving at the location where the murderous intent was coming from, he noticed dead bodies and park. 
He asked him what he was doing behind Min's house. Park explained that the dead bodies that were on the ground were members of the Japanese Yakuza. They were after the crystal moss that Hyunmu was selling. It's very valuable even in the overseas market. The Japanese Yakuza aren't the only ones interested in the crystal moss Hyunmu had. Even the top-ranking hunters were looking for him. Park explained that if he hadn't protected the house, Min would have gotten hurt. Hyunmu asked him what he wanted in return for protecting Min, and Park told him to create an alliance with the Tisun Guild. Realizing that Lee was behind this, Hyunmu told Park that he rejected the Tisun Guild's offer earlier. Park ignored him and continued on. He says that he looked into Hyunmo, but surprisingly he couldn't find anything, as if someone erased every information about him. The crystal moss he sells can only be obtained from high-level dungeons. The consequences for showing off during the test is catching up to him. Not just that Park learned from Lee that Hyunmo was moving during the test like someone who had been entering dungeons for a long time, and yet his career was dungeon cleaner. Something was fishy. Park thought he was working with an organization, so he advised him to form an alliance with Tisun Guild again. Hyunmo thanked him again and told him he wasn't part of an organization, thinking that Hyunmu is lying. Park decided to take a different approach, and asked him to be understanding if he is a little rough. Hyunmu's skills automatically activated sensing that he was in danger. Hyunmu called out to Park trying to explain the misunderstanding, but Park suddenly attacked him with his cane. Hyunmu dodged the attack and from that awkward position he attacked. Park didn't bother to dodge expecting that the punch would have no effect because Hyunmu was in an awkward position, but to his surprise the punch pushed him back, and Hyunmu says he started this so he is just defending himself. Park took off his trench coat. If Hyunmu didn't want to take his advice then he would have to play rougher. He threw the trench coat at Hyunmu and pulled out a sword. Hyunmu complained saying the sword was cheating, and as Park was about to slice him battle helper activates helping him dodge the attacks. Park continued to attack pushing Hyunmu to the wall. He couldn't back up anymore so he used the walls as a spring and jumped over Park. After landing on the ground he gets happy that he got behind Park, but suddenly Park attacks. He dodged the attack and used the domination skill, stunning Park for a moment. Using this opening he grabbed Park's collar getting ready to put the old man to sleep, but suddenly Park's body became heavy and he asked Hyunmu if the domination skill was illusionary, which would be odd. He cuts Hyunmu's wrist saying he didn't cut his neck on purpose because he didn't plan on killing him, and he asked Hyunmu who he was working for. Hyunmu started laughing concerning Park, so he asked him what he found so funny. Hyunmu asked him if Lee didn't give him the full information about the test. Park looked at his sword realizing that the steel was melting away. He hadn't taken into account Hyunmu's poisoned blood, but before he could react Hyunmu grabbed his face and pinned him into the wall with his bleeding hand. Hyunmu asked him if he didn't spend time building his poison resistance even though he was so high level. To free himself, Park broke Hyunmu's hand and sent him flying with a kick. He quickly took out a potion from his jacket and used it on himself. Hyunmu who was healed stood up asking Park to give him some of the potion. Park couldn't believe it. He was certain that he made contact with Hyunmu's arm and ribs. So how was he standing there like nothing had happened? He asked Hyunmu if he had a healing skill. Hyunmu dodged his question and asked him if he wanted to continue. Park looked at his broken sword realizing that he couldn't continue the fight and told Hyunmu that he was done fighting. His goal was to offer him a deal, not to fight him. Hyunmu reminded him that he was the one that attacked first. Park explained that he was trying to convince him with force, but Hyunmu gave him more resistance than he planned for. Again he started to wonder which organization would be able to train Hyunmu to this level. This irritates Hyunmu and he says listen old man, I don't work for an organization. I work alone if we're not counting men. Park asked, where are you getting your crystal moss from? Hyunmu told him that it was his business secret, and Park explained that if he joined the Tisun Guild he could have everything he imagined and more. Hyunmu told him that he promised himself that he would never work for someone, although that could change if Park decided to work under him. Park laughed, asking Hyunmu to stop talking nonsense, and if he had nothing else to say then he would take his leave. Park was someone Hyunmu wanted to work with for his connections, and after finding out that he is also a capable hunter, he couldn't lose this chance. And as Park was walking away he asked him why he thought the Tisun Guild was so great. He heard they were smaller than the Rank 3 Guild on Mighty Lotus, and their average member is weaker than a Rank 2. He asked him if the Tisun Guild was just popular because of Lee, why not drop them and invest in someone who is young and talented like me? Park replied saying I believe there are two types of people that go around saying what he just said. 
First is a fool that's unaware of reality, and second is a loser drowning in their own ambitious thoughts of becoming successful like Lee. Hyunwoo laughed, for someone who just lost to him Park was being a little harsh, and even if he tried to use the damaged blade Park couldn't touch him. Park directed a skill at him, and explained that if he fought with the intention to kill then Hyunwoo wouldn't be left standing. Got a taste of humbling pie, on top of that there were plenty of members in the Tison guild that were stronger than him, and on top of them all was Lee, and for someone like Hyunwoo who hasn't even reached level 10 10 yet to disrespect Lee wasn't even funny. Hyunwoo asked what is so impressive about Lee. I will show you that I am better than Lee, but tell me how much stronger do I have to be compared to Lee? Park laughed and told Hyunwoo that Lee reached level 20 less than half a year after becoming a hunter, which was only possible because Lee had the backing of the Tison Guild. For a regular person it would take them a year, or more. So if Hyunwoo wanted to show him that he was more talented than Lee he would have to show him something impressive. Hyunwoo told him that he will get to level 20 in two weeks, and if he could do it then Park would have to become his business partner. Park told him that his bet isn't something he could laugh at. He didn't know where Hyunwoo was training but for his sake he hoped it was better than where Lee trained. As Park walked off, Hyunwoo smiled, saying don't worry, I know just the place. Later in hell Hyunwoo had a goblin pinned on the ground and was using him as a punching bag. The goblin bit his fist but soon realized that his blood was poisonous. The goblin stopped biting Hyunwoo's fist, but Hyunwoo shoved his fist down the goblin's throat, edging him on to eat the food he put in his mouth. After a little struggle the goblin died and Hyunwoo leveled up reaching level 15. The conquering star Arden started observing Hyunwoo. Hyunwoo lifted his hand at the sky to give the star the middle finger, but he quickly realized that his hand was deformed due to what he did to the goblin. He wrapped a bandage around his hand realizing that he shouldn't be pushing his body this hard. Suddenly Renian appeared out of nowhere, screaming at Hyunwoo that fairies are scared of fighting, and he dared to continue fighting. Seeing that Hyunwoo was injured she poked her staff into the bandages and asked him if she should try to apply some pressure, and started drinking his blood. Hyunwoo became irritated, but calmed down after realizing that he could be revived if he died but he wasn't sure if he could survive if she drank his blood in the real world. At least things were getting better, compared to wandering around trying to find monsters, this was a big improvement. The only problem is the goblin from his first day in hell. Out of all the goblins he killed he still wasn't able to find that goblin. That goblin was stronger than all the other goblins he's seen. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. Hyunwoo instantly backed off questioning where the goblin appeared from and he called out to Renian to get away from the goblin and find a place to hide. But she had already disappeared. Seeing its dead comrades, the goblin let out a battle cry. Hyunwoo asked the monster what it was doing. He never thought that monsters would get sad after their own kind is killed. He shouted at the monster to stop wasting his time and attack him. The goblin was sent into a rage and it rushed at Hyunwoo. He died, and after reviving he received a new quest, enemies on a wooden bridge, and his object is to kill the goblin that killed him. Hyunwoo laid there exhausted. He really pissed off the goblin by killing his friends. Well, no matter how strong it is, it was just a goblin. All he had to do was lure it into a trap like any other mob and get some poison lace thumbtacks to use in the trap. As he made up his plan to kill the goblin, it appeared behind him and killed him. Hyunwoo died and on his sixth try he was running away from the goblin. He questioned if killing the goblin's friend triggered some kind of event because the goblin wasn't even giving him a second to rest. Honestly though the goblin was the one who started it first, the goblin attacked, and Hyunwoo countered, giving him hope that he could survive if he just countered the goblin's attack. However shortly after the goblin killed him, he realized that he is no match for the goblin, and questioned if he should just hide like a coward after reviving. There is an old saying, revenge only leads to more revenge, and forgiveness is the only way to obtain victory. If that's true then it might be better if he forgot about the goblin and spent his time trying to level up but he would rather die than run away like a coward. He has no plans of letting anyone get away with anything against him, nor is he going to live his life with regrets. If anyone tries to stab him in the back, then he will make sure they pay for it. But if he ran away just because he couldn't get revenge, his pride wouldn't be able to handle it. After dying again, Hyunwoo disappeared, and the Red Cap Goblin spent days looking for him. He couldn't find him, so he questioned if Hyunwoo had run away. Red Cap couldn't stop searching yet. It was too early to relax. Not only can Hyunwoo revive, he is crafty. It couldn't stop looking for Hyunwoo because it didn't know what he was planning. No matter what, he couldn't let Hyunwoo reach them. Suddenly, a goblin called out to Red Cap saying something terrible had happened to the others. It informed Red Caps that the others were dying because someone put poison in the drinking water, so Kursen needed to return right now. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video then hit the like button.